Hola, Hola pichulines. pichulines, welcome to another adventure to Cusco, Cusco Perú. Perú. Hola pichulines, don't forget to like our videos, leave a comment below and subscribe to our channel. Bye! We are in Cusco at 3,400 meters above sea level. Yeah. So we're here in the desert. So we're gonna give you some advices. You will know what to do and what not to do. We have learned a few lessons on our three days that we are here. So yeah, actually we're gonna be here for 15 days. To sum up what we've done, day one, we arrived here. We didn't do much, we just went uh, to do some very basic grocery shopping. We tried to acclimatate, it's very hard. We came directly from Trujillo, which is sea level. Uh, a little bit uh, fussy. The, I was a little bit uh, with some issues trying to breathe, especially the fact that we wore the double mask all over from Trujillo. and It's hard to breathe at such high altitude, especially with the mask and breathing your own air. We bought some coca, coca leaves, if you know coca leaves, it's cocaine leaves, right? It's known as cocaine leaves in other countries. It's not drug, it actually helps your system to survive better in high altitude and the Incas used it to deal with the issues at high altitude. And to our surprise, we're actually on the fifth floor without elevators. We actually had to stop five times getting up on the first day. Yeah. We were out of breath. And migraine. I was very thirsty. So when your body lacks oxy oxygen, it's gonna crave for uh, oxygen from the water. So you're gonna get very thirsty. So make sure that you have a lot of water handy so you can provide the oxygen that you're not gonna get from the air from another source. Here in Cusco, anything that you wanna do, you have to climb stairs, you have to climb a hill. Mm -hmm. So anywhere you're gonna go, you have to go up and down, up and down, nothing is flat. So you have to be prepared, you have to wear comfortable shoes. And the other thing that you need to be aware is that you have to know that the difference in temperature between morning, midday, and night could be easily 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. So you need to carry a backpack, you need to carry a hat, and you need to be ready to remove jackets and put jackets on mm -hmm. within a matter of minutes. Right now, it's almost 5 p.m. It's almost 5 p.m., but it's still a bit hot. But when it reached like 6 p.m., it's starting to cool down. And it's very, very cold at night until like 8 in the morning. It, yeah. it could easily go below zero within a matter of hours. And as soon as the sun disappears, temperature drops dramatically. Our skin really dries up anywhere everywhere yes, our lips <laughs> our, our lips. ears the nose mm -hmm. hands everywhere day two uh, we hire a taxi we try to take it easy which help us roam around um el centro where plaza de armas is and the cathedrals churches here in cusco we went to a resto to celebrate her birthday <laughs> Make a wish! Bravo! Oh, also, we went to this jewelry shop up in the mountain, which is also an um, alpaca textile shop. Yes, we found this very nice guy, actually. He used to be a marine. He spoke really, really good English. We had a tour on how they make silver here in Peru. Which is actually the best silver in the world. We learned the difference between a 925 and a 950 silver. Yes, and we also learned the difference between all the camelidos that there are in the world. He also showed us how to spot the dodgy alpaca sweaters that you can find around. We didn't know how easy it is actually to spot the difference. The guy was 
very, very knowledgeable. And also he was a very kind person and very easy to talk to. This happens to be a little piece of our raw material. This is called silver, silver 1000. As you already know, Peru is still in the top list of silver producers. In a way, in order for us to be able to make beautiful jewelry, we have to mix it a little bit with copper. Mm -hmm. And the formula to follow is simple. 95% silver, 5% copper. We melt at a high temperatures in this typical oven. And while it's liquid, uh, we pour up in different molds where we end up getting wires as well as plates from this other one. Then it goes into a pool of cold water, we level it down, and that way we have it ready to go through the laminating machine. Mm -hmm. To the laminating process. Through this machine, actually manually, we're either going to get laminating sheets as well as little wires from the grooves. This is what we end up to, uh, we used to create the beautiful uh, Change you'll see later on. Right over this way, please. On the table, this is where the whole action takes place is by using simple tools. No machines, no fancy equipment. Silver plate, most of the time, is going to be used as a base of the yield, like this. The little designs I carry on with the wires. And the next step actually gets a little complicated because we have to take our time in selecting the colors that we're going to use here. This here, for an example, represents the perfect couple, the sun and the moon, which will be a beautiful uh, souvenir for somebody modeling love, a beautiful couple celebrating anniversary or something like that. Right over this uh, table, oh, by the way, if in case you wonder, where's everybody? Well, on Saturdays, you only wore half a day. Mm -hmm. How lucky can they be? Huh? I have to be here till six o'clock today. <laughs> <laughs> Seashells that come from the very north part of Peru. Very close to Ecuador, we find seashells such as abalone, mother pearl, also known as concha de nacar, and the famous spondylos. They was worth more than money for the Incas. This was the actual money for the royalty families. Remember, the Incas did not value silver or gold until the Spaniards arrived here in America. How do they get here? That's a good question. Through messengers called chasquis. Men in good shape, able to run between 25 up to 30 kilometers at one time. Mm -hmm. Stones. Now, uh, let me stop right here a little bit to remind you that the stones, as well as all kinds of minerals, they were also uh, very important for the Incas. They were, they were so mystical, they thought that they were uh, alive somehow. This here is a very special stone. Come straight from the very south part of Peru, close to Chile. Lapis Lazuli. Lapis Lazuli. Chile is the country, by the way, that is ranking right there on the top list of uh, the main producers of lapis. Second one is Pakistan. Pakistan, Afghanistan, Russia, China, all of them. Turquoise. Hundreds of beautiful colors of Peruvian turquoise. This next one is very special too. This is called serpentine, in Spanish serpentina. Comes straight from Machu Picchu, color like light greens and grays. This probably remind you of a beautiful jade, an albino jade. This one glows a little bit of dark. This is considered to be the stone of fortune. Ooh. So you can place it in uh, your business, the restaurants and things like that, and it's supposed to bring you a lot of customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We Latinos are crazy about all those beliefs, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and it works, believe me. You have to believe in those things. Uh, the next step is right here. This is like the grinder wheel. Spins around with high velocity. The boys, they're going to be using, they're so creative. They'll be cutting, molding, shaping every little piece I have to fit here perfectly. Mm -hmm. This is like putting a little fossil together. Something like this beautiful pendant probably is going to take us two days, two days and a half, sometimes three days. It all depends on uh, the design they're working on it. The last part, but not the least, the polishing of the jewelry. We use natural products rather than plain old wax. Mm -hmm. to achieve beautiful results. Then we wash it in hot water and detergent and it's placed in this drawer full of sawdust. Not a cloth, so all the moist. 
And right before it goes to uh, quality control, and that will be me. <laughs> Look over here. Beautiful. Smooth as a piece of glass. Oh my. Mm, you see that? And this is a uh, work, madame. It takes a lot of it. This is a collector's item. Can I huh? see the back? Sure. And here we go. All silver. Shine has a mirror. So it's nine fifty. Nine fifty, and it has a nine fifty seal on it. Ninety percent mm -hmm. of the beautiful ninety. 950 jewelry have to be made by hand. Some countries like Mexico and some other uh, uh, Central American countries have been told that they're more familiar with 925 ah, or even as low as 850. That means you have to be walking around with a handkerchief. We clean it every five or ten minutes. Yeah. If in the past you have bad experience with silver earrings, for an example, uh, probably the bad quality that creates that infection, that bad reaction when you eat. The rush. Yes. Mm. Uh, on your sensitive parts now these days, people are wearing on the belly buttons and you have to be careful. 950 is a very yeah. good quality. In, in, in the US, they sell you the 925 as the top of the line. I want to ask a question. How much are those? That one, for example. That one there. Uh, prices the change. varies. Yeah. It could go from 250, 350 US dollars. Mm -hmm. Yes. They got some little ones like this too, which I like myself a little ones. Um, with a lot of color, this together with a beautiful pendant will put you right on the 200 soles. Oh, okay. How do you, how do you Clean prove it? if it's true 950? 950, okay. Uh, the easy way, the practical way for somebody like us, it'll be fire. If I have in dowels, I throw this in a bucket of uh, acid. Automatically it turns dark. Then I know it's not silver. I'm not giving you funny ideas to be walking around the city of Cusco with a bucket of acid, testing it was real and what's not. Okay. Let's be practical. The reason why you're here is because we're certifying. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been doing business for so many years. Besides having you here today, we've been getting famous people. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Jim Carrey. Uh, Miss Cameron Diaz, Antonio Banderas, wow. Juanes, Don Francisco was here many, Don many Francisco, months ago. Mario Kreutzberger. Yes, Ana Maria Polo, the judge that you see on TV. We have um, the guy from Philippines, boxer. Amani Pacquiao. Oh, all right. Yes. So this is the, the, the place here right now, as a matter of fact. As, as simple as it looks, but yes, we've been very glad to... Uh, been in the business for quite some time. Now, up there are the pictures of all our South American camellias. They all are from the same family, from the long distant cousins, the camel, from the other continent. Now, out of all of these five guys, Vicuña as well as Guanaco, they're still running on the wild. Okay, alpacas, that's what I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit. Here, this happens to be baby alpaca. The very first, I'm allergic. Uh, the very first haircut that the alpaca gets. You see that? Now, two kinds of alpacas. This is good if you're into uh, allergy, you have a reaction. It's been tested. Wakaya is the one that comes in uh, almost 32 different natural colors. Suri is known as the Peruvian Rasta. Comes between four and six colors. A lady early was asking me, how much wool can we get from these guys here? Wakaya every year, year and a half, as much as two kilos, two kilos and a half. Suri, as you notice, it can double that amount very easy. Vicuña, our Andean princess, she likes to take her sweet time. That way we have to wait three long years for us to be able to get between 250, 300 grams of wool. Mm -hmm. Now you want to know how expensive can it be? Yeah. A garment. A famous Italian designer, Lorenzo Piana. Mr. Piano is selling the Cunha code between 35 up to 50,000 US dollars. And that's a long waiting list for a little bit over a year already. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about royalty, right? <laughs> Guanaco is a long distance cousin from the alpaca. They mainly like to hang around Patagonia, way down south, between yeah. Chile and Argentina. But they like to come to visit their cousins every year and a half or so. Basically, they come here for haircuts. Then we send them back to Chile like that. Single file. <laughs> <laughs> they are the spitters. Yes. They like to spit on you. Actually. Oh, yeah. You have to be careful. You have to be very careful. A good sign is when they uh, start turning their uh, 
bending their ears, ears yeah. to the back. They, and then they, yeah. on you. Oh. Being deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Lama is like a little donkey for the Incas. They said that it was the most important part of the everyday life for the Incas, but as a cargo animal. Uh, we don't make no garment with llama because it's a little uncomfortable, kind of itchy. You'll end up driving you cuckoo for sure. Now you're welcome to come a little closer. Uh, for the simple fact that you decide to come and visit us, I would like to show you real quick how to recognize a genuine alpaca sweater. Next time you have one in your hands, you want to know for sure. Let's start with this one. Fill this one out, please, senor, madame. This is acrylic, polyester synthetic. This is synthetic. 100%. Still Maybe even made in China. I don't know. The colors are a little too shiny, too faded. Mm -hmm. Besides, you're not going to find yellow alpacas running around Machu Picchu. This next one is the most popular one out of all of them you see all over town. You see little old ladies selling you this as alpaca. Shame on them. This is a mixed garment. 20% llama, 80% synthetic. Oh, yeah. You see that? The real price for something like this probably between three dollars five dollars they're gonna sell this to you for as much as eighty dollars if they can shame on them this next one a full grown alpaca it's machine made but still it's way much much better than those two we don't sell that many of this uh, here because we are more into the uh, baby alpaca business mm -hmm. you notice that little like kind of greasy uh, much cooler than this other one. Mm -hmm. That's a natural grease they develop in the high mountains to protect themselves. But once you start wearing it, we'll adjust to your body temperature immediately. Kind of a high-tech baby alpaca. And this next one, I guess we don't need no drums introduction. This is the real thing. Baby alpaca, 100%. Feels a little like cashmere, pretty heavy for the sweater. And the funny sensation at its weight, cool, I see. Yeah. That's a... Natural grease. It's amazing. actually closer to cotton type. This is much better than cotton. If in case of a rain, cotton will get wet much easier than baby and this. alpaca. Mm -hmm. And this other one here is also baby alpaca. We use natural products for coloring process. Different plants. This is like food. a mustard color. Yes. Even the buttons are made so special. This is ceramic. Yeah. Little girls, 14, 15 year old girls, they like to do this on their spare time. Each of them is made individual. So as soon as we work with local communities here. How do you want to keep this nice and clean? That's a million dollar question. Hand wash, cold water, regular hair shampoo, let it dry flat, or if you choose the practical ways in your dry cleaning services, just make sure to tell them. Be careful with my baby, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope it's been quite a lesson on baby alpaca as well as the beautiful jewel we have. This is the way out. Thank you. Roberto, Roberto, Tashana, 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 To the left of you, you are seeing all this area with this Catholic building and also with the basin with a semicircular shape is the original remains of the Incas. With the black building with a semicircular shape is the original remains of the Incas. No? This was destroyed to make now this Catholic church, the St. Dominic church. No? In the Incas time, this uh, car of the Cusco city was known as like a Inti Huasi. The house of the sun, no? And now, Cody can.